Test, test. Hey guys, how's it going? Woo! I can't see, so I'm just gonna assume it is packed out there, so let me hear ya. That sounded great. All right guys, so I don't know if the program description really made sense or not, but uh, basically what we're gonna do is what we did last year is we're going to take actual scripts from the period, we have a script from 1952 and a script from 1946. Spoilers, they're really weird. It was a different time. Uh, we have edited out some of the super not okay for nowadays stuff, but we have left in some stuff that's like, wow, really cool, mm, interesting. Let's see if you can spot it. Uh, one of the exciting things also about this panel is we have this amazing uh, table full of wonderful voice actors. We're gonna introduce them in a second. But also over here, we have the wonderful and talented Victor Frost. Give a big round of applause for Victor over here. As you walked in, you were hearing some beautiful music played on actual vinyl. You can Google what that is later. Uh, and we also, that is what it is right there, ladies and gentlemen. No, stop it. <laughs> panel is canceled. Um, so what's really great about this panel is that we're also going to try to create, on the spot, with no rehearsal or preparation, an actual radio program, which includes live accompaniment, kind of, as well as <laughs> this year, live sound effects, also known as Foley. And Victor actually is looking for some Foley, Foley artist volunteers. So if you yes. want to raise your hand and you want to come assist us and be on stage with these crazy bunch of people and help us, Victor, you need to help me. I can't actually see if anyone's raising their hand. Or there's, no. a, there's, a, there's a few people raising hands. Yeah. How many do you need, Victor? Um, two people. I need two, two handy helpers. I see one in the second row, one in the front row. Okay. One of the, are you talking? I'll meet you, you guys on the side. What, you didn't point at anybody. He's, he's going to come to you because nobody knows who he's talking about. Yes, yes. Yeah. You too, yes. Oh you too. Oh, those two. There you go. Oh, yeah. We got your Foley artists. Yeah. 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 All right. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> so, guys, basically, if you're not familiar with, Foley is the art of, it's actually named after a man named Foley. So, it just goes to show you, if you invent something, name it after yourself, and everyone will remember you. Or good or bad. At least your name. At least your name. <laughs> Uh, also, um, basically what Vic, uh, Victor has done, he's gone and gotten lots of household fun items here. And he's going to be using those to create some items. Victor, tell us about that. Ah, well, you see, I have a cornucopia of corny sound effect creating items. I have... Do you need a wireless? Well, I got a wireless. Yeah, let me borrow that one so this one can live here. I've got a wonderful array of items. I've got balloons. I've got this tiny piano thing I found at Goodwill. It's beautiful. I've got one of these things. Naomi, right? Give this a good old, give a, give a good toot on that. Brilliant. Oh, and uh, you get a party hat. And you get a party hat. There you go. These are my special helper hats. <laughs> yes, these items, though innocuous they may seem, hold a potential in the world of imagination. Shun, shun, shun. <laughs> and you'll see how they are used and much, much more as we go through the show. Brian, you good? Okay. Am I keeping this one? Brian's trying to tell us what to do. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't have rehearsals. I'm assuming this lives with me now. <laughs> yes, that is yours. That's my gift to you. Sound department, are you ready? We are as ready as we will ever be. I love your hats. I also love your vest. Excellent, excellent. All right, everybody. I'm a little jealous. Uh, we're, just because we're starting a little late, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. Are you ready? Yes! Victor, a little mood music, if you please. Oh, uh, but of course, but of course. Let's see, what are we gonna do here? Uh, ah, here we are. I say? I hope you know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anime Los Angeles 2019 to the Old Timey Radio Panel. Woo! Our first adventure tonight is a script from 1946, The Adventures of Superman. Starring the talents of... Uh. Kyle McCarley. 
as narrator number one and uh, Chief Engineer McCosh. Janine Melody as Beanie. Ezra Weiss as Batman. Yeah! Chris Turgliaferra as Barry White, editor Daily Planet, and Dick Robin. <laughs> Christopher Wakecamp as Clark Kent and <laughs> Superman. <laughs> and Skip Stelrecht as Narrator 2. Excellence, are you all ready? Yes. Remember, feel free to cheer, boo, heckle, do your taxes, whatever you like. You're a part of the show as well. It's live theater. Woo! Sound ready? Almost. We're just accommodating for one of our assistants over here. Of course, <laughs> of course, please. Okay. All right. Skip, uh, Victor is going to lead us in, and you have the first line. Okay. Oh, yeah, you be narrator one, Skip. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, who's narrator one? Are you Skip, narrator? Skip's narrator one. Skip's I'll be narrator two. Oh, I thought you said you were narrator I one. I did. It doesn't I'm matter. I'm not narrator It's live. <laughs> Kyle, you're now narrator one. Here we oh, go. I am. Okay. Oh, am I narrator one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I'll do two. Okay. Okay. We've got okay. that settled. This is going smooth, I we think, got don't it. you? We'll, we'll cut that out. Do we have this. music before yes, we start? Yeah, it, is, it is coming. It is coming. Maestro. Music to start, or do we Lead us off. Yes, yes. We're going right to get some on. intro music. <clears throat> this is going well. So well. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap buildings at a single bound. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. I got you. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from a planet, Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers, far beyond those of mortal men. And who, disguised as Clark Kent, mid-mild-mannered mid reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Clark Kent, gaily humming Jingle Bells, walks through the Daily Planet City room to Editor Perry White's office. Jingle Bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Hey! Unaware that the one man in the world who can identify him as Superman is waiting within. A jingle Bells, a jingle all the way. Oh! Hey, Beanie! Huh, hi, Mr. Kent. How do you like our Christmas tree? <laughs> oh, it's swell, Beanie, swell. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells. Well, here we are. I wonder what the chief was so anxious to see me about, golly. <laughs> Stopping before Perry White's door, Kent reaches for the doorknob. In a moment, in a matter of seconds, a great secret may be revealed. The zealously guarded secret of his double identity. But first! <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, 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 that was it. Music cues. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and now, the adventures of Superman! There was a commercial there. We Con cut it out. <laughs> convinced that Clark Kent, his mild-mannered reporter, is really Superman in disguise, editor Perry White perfected an elaborate scheme to prove it. By a clever ruse, he had lured Superman to a ship suspected of being in peril. No. No. However, <laughs> Superman <laughs> sensed something afoot and had stayed dressed as Clark Kent on board the engineer of the ship, had seen, the, had, had, had seen and spoken to Kent, and had said the name was Mr. Clark. And at this very moment, the engineer is in Perry White's office. And Kent is about to walk into the trap. 
But as he starts to open the door, a strange yet somehow familiar voice in the office reaches his ears. I never forget a face, Miss Lane. Like my papa used to say, you can't get nowhere in life if you can't tell which cow you've already milked from the rest of the herd. And if this... Quiet, please. Quiet, Mr. Bakash. He'll be here any second. Startled, his hand still on the door. Kent probes the thick panels with x-ray vision and then gasp. <laughs> probe, 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 <laughs> probe. <laughs> what? It's the engineer of the Atlantic Queen. Oh, if he sees me, I'm a dead duck. I've got to get out of here and fast. Look, look, Lois. Kent is in his, Kent is in his office. <laughs> Victor. What? Kent is... Lois Lane. <clears throat> He's not in his office, no. Lois. What do you have to say about that? No, he isn't. Well, that's funny, Chief. I'll say it's funny. Hey, a beanie, beanie modern. Coming up, Chief. I mean, Mr. White. Now, listen, beanie. Did you, uh... How do you all like the way I trimmed our Christmas tree? That there's a tree you could take dancing. Oh, it's just fine, beanie, but... Never mind the Christmas tree. Did you see Clark Kent? Mr. Kent? Sure, he was here just a minute ago. He was? Well, where is he? He went out. Out? I don't know. He wasn't feeling so good all of a sudden. Oh, that reminds me of the time we took on a load of pickled squid in the Far East. Uh, continues his story in the background. Oh, listen, what? Do you think you ought to put more blue light Will you there? listen? Oh, would you please just pipe yeah. down already? Will you all listen? What do you mean Kent wasn't feeling so good all of a sudden? Oh, I'm still talking in the He background. was okay when he came into the city room, but just what before he got to your office, he stopped and then he came hurrying back, squid. almost running. I know oh, oh. what the good oh. squid means. Never again, I swear. Uh, what what Wait, were we talking word. about again? I know why he wasn't <laughs> feeling well. He saw Makash in my office. What a chump I was. I forgot about his x-ray vision. We'll find him. We've got to. You get Makash and I'll, uh, I'll, uh... Chief, use your head. If Clark is Superman and saw Makash in your office, he'd realize what was up. Why, he was probably in China right now. No, he isn't. That would be a giveaway. He'll be around, waiting for Makash to leave. You got you it, You get Makash and meet me downstairs. Okay, Chief, you got it. I'll get my car. We're going to find out about Mr. Kent. As White and Lois began the pursuit, Clark Kent had arrived with a hand, at a handsome mansion facing the park where the famous Batman and his young companion, Robin, lived. Wayne, otherwise known as Batman, is the one person to whom Superman has confessed his double identity. Can he help Superman in his hour of need? This is the worst jam I've ever been in, Bruce. I don't know what to do. Now take it easy, Clark. May not be as bad as you think. What are you kidding? Or I, something? I know, Kent. Robin and I are up against the same danger. <laughs> and yet, you tell me I'm not on a spot. Well, geez, Mr. Kent, or, um, Mr. Man, you can just fly off if someone gets too close. I said it may not be as bad as you <laughs> Oh. You may only imagine that Perry White and the others suspect who you are. I tell you. I know they do, Bruce. What happened? <laughs> well, <laughs> Robin's got well, <laughs> yesterday, White showed me a sealed envelope addressed to Superman. To Superman? Yes, we sometimes get them at the planet. Mm, oh. White asked me if I had any idea how to contact Superman. Well, I stalled, of course, but 
Meanwhile, I read the letter inside the envelope with my X-ray vision. Mm. I bet that's handy in lots of situations. Shh, <laughs> Dick. <laughs> yes, what did it say? <laughs> that, I'm not sure why I confided in you guys. <laughs> that, a, that a time bomb... <clears throat> Planted in the engine room of the <laughs> Queen, is it hard to breathe in here? <laughs> Which was then at sea on route to Metropolis. Well, naturally, I ducked away from White and hopped out to the Atlantic Queen as Superman. Well, naturally. At the last moment, though, I got a little suspicious of that letter. It just didn't quite ring true. So I decided to appear on the ship in my street clothes. You know, as if I were one of the passengers. <laughs> you in a bathing suit playing shuffleboard would be something to say. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny to uh-huh. see. <laughs> shuffle, <Yeah>. shuffle. <laughs> like, uh, shuffle the board. <laughs> knocked, uh. knocked you off the ten spot. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's pretty. What then? Oh, well, I went to the engine room and dug the bomb out from behind a boiler. It was a phony. But you fooled them. You didn't appear on the ship as Superman. Oh, but wait a minute. You didn't run into anyone you knew there. No. Did you? No. Really? <laughs> no. You mean it? But I did run into the chief engineer. Well, so what? I don't know. So at this moment, he's sitting in Perry White's office at the Daily Planet. What? (laughs) Dollars to donuts. White got him there to identify me and destroy Superman. Gas. Wait a minute. This line is labeled mine, but I'm pretty sure it's yours. Holy Robin. understatement, Batman. Ah. This is bad. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Typos happened in the olden days, too. <laughs> I didn't think you would refer to yourself in first person, Batman. No, oh, but I could try it. Let me give it a go. Holy <laughs> understatements, Batman. <laughs> I think you did a good job. Oh. It couldn't be any worse. No, you can't (laughs) do that. Oh, it couldn't be any worse. No, you can't do that. Yeah, it's all right. We'll go with it. I don't know. (laughs) It was a different time, people. Yes, if you run away now, Kent, you'll practically be admitting that you're Superman. You've got to face that engineer. Look him square in the eyes. Move him closely for a kiss. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and make him say you're not the same man. Oh, but, oh, but, oh, but I am the man. So how? Oh, let me think. Let me think. Rub my head, Robin. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> there must be a way. <sighs> Should I leave? No, it's okay. No, 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 no. No, no, it's fine. No, 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 we're used to people watching. Oh, okay. Okay. It's all right. Okay. We solve crimes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I can't think of any. I told Beanie I was sick just now when I ran out of the city room, but I can't keep that dodge up for long. Because I suck. <laughs> that's, that's it. Clark. That's what? I've got it. Wait till I get my makeup kit. Well, I, I, but I... <laughs> Look at the work that's done on my eyes. <laughs> makeup kit? Oh, here it is. Now, how quickly can you get us back to your apartment? Well, we could call an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a few seconds as Superman, but why? Strip down to your costume, chum. And don't waste any time asking questions. <laughs> Give me your phone. <laughs> Come on, hurry. But best not to argue and just start unbuttoning. Okay, I want to, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. That's it. Slower, slower. 
That's right. Turn <laughs> around. In Good Clark Kent's apartment, Bruce Wayne, who is really Batman, is skillfully applying the contents of theatrical makeup box to Kent's face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Look up. That's right. There. You're as pale as a ghost, Clark. <laughs> now, I'll just change the shape of your nose a little with this bloody. Hey, careful, that's my schnoz. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got the one. That's it, there. Then, I'll color it bright red. I'm oh. Batman. <laughs> No, it it won't work, Bruce. <laughs> it really won't. Dick. Work. work. Wait. Bruce. Hold on. Cuz. Go on. Take those cheaters up. Nope. There we have it. Who Bruce. separated my script? Bruce, are you having a Shh. stroke? Easy, Kent. You'd be surprised how different you look already. Hey, look! My nose! I've had a lot of practice with this makeup. Mmm. Yeah, but if you change me too much, Harry White will catch on. Chief is no dope, you know. I'm not changing you too much. I'm just making you look like a guy with a terrific cold. <laughs> ha chew. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh... Can you make your voice good and hoarse? Huh? Oh, uh, uh like, like this. <laughs> mm, that's 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 mm. not too good. Uh, <laughs> hmm. uh, well then, a little better. A little better. How's this? <laughs> <laughs> Getting closer, maybe a little hoarser. <laughs> Nay. <laughs> it's good enough. It's good enough, Kent. It's good enough. Remember to cough a lot when you speak. That'll help. Good boy. Cough. Oh, I'm afraid of this gag. Don't be. You may even like it. <laughs> no. Stop worrying, Kent. It's your only chance. That's right. Rub, rub my head. Rub my head, Dick. That's it. It's your only chance anyway. There. Your nose is done. Yeah. Feels awful. Oh, now. Let's see. Well, what do you think? I'm evaluating. Hmm. <laughs> you still look too much like Kent. Oh, then that's that. We tried our best. Let's just give up. Hmm. No, 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 no. Wait. I've got an idea. Uh, take off those horn-rimmed glasses. Oh, no. I, I take them off when I'm Superman. If I take them off now, I'll give myself away. Ha, <laughs> ha. Not with your eyes all bleary and running with tears. What do you mean? Oh, no. <laughs> Go on. Take off those cheaters while I find you the uh, de onion. <laughs> the what? Uh, it's a concentrated essence of that handy little mm -hmm. vegetable known as the onion. the onion, yeah, that's right. Tell ah, me. Ah, <laughs> here it is. Ooh, that's oh. a ripe one. Whoa. Oh, but Bruce, I, I don't know if I'm subject to onion fumes. Uh-oh, I never thought of that. Well, we'll soon find out. I'll open this bottle and... <gasps> oh, no. Open the door, Kent. This is Perry White. I know you're in there. Shh, shh. All right, all right. This is it, then. All right. Hop into the bedroom and pile onto bed. Clark, do it. Here, here. The bed, you idiot. In the bed. Well, well, Sprinkle this onion essence all over your pillow and pray it works on you. Pray to the Holy Ghost. Oh, but Bruce, oh, Bruce. Uh, Coming! Get 
going, Clark. And remember, speak hoarsely. Nay, like a frog, Ribbit. I'm so confused because you did a horse, but then a frog. I don't know. Oh, I'll try, Bruce, but something tells me my number's on the hoot. Coming. I'm coming. I'll quit your racket. Oh, boy, if only this works. Taking a deep breath, Bruce Wayne opens the door and Perry White walks in, followed by Augustus McC. Kosh, the oh, engineer of Atlantic Queen and Miss Lane. And before Wayne can say a word, White heads for Kent's bedroom, motioning for the engineer to follow. <coughs> Come in, gentlemen. Come in. Uh, <laughs> fellas. There's my music. What will happen when Augustus McCosh faces Kent? Will he identify him as the mysterious Mr. Clark? and so reveal him as Superman? Join, Join us next, next time to, to find out. So that there, sports fans, was a script from The Adventures of Superman, 1946. Weird, huh? So weird. Uh, thank you. Can we get a big round of applause for our Foley volunteers? I take zero credit. I had an amazing team. This is fantastic. Thank you guys so much. Who could forget the classic Batman and Superman tale of Batman and Robin giving Superman a makeover? Oh, no! <laughs> How did that never get remade into I, any of the iterations yeah. of Batman? I feel I like Batman, Batman and Robin Batman are more than Superman just movies. Yeah. Number two. That is the Batman versus <laughs> Superman 2. <laughs> they mix in the cast of Barbershop, and it's perfect. <laughs> All right, guys, we're, we're going to do uh, another. Was that, was that bearable? Would you like to hear another? <laughs> it, only, it only gets weirder, though. Okay, that was the warm up. All right, everyone, uh, you're going to help us cast this next one because we didn't have time to do it before. Oh, boy. Uh, we right. know some of the roles. Uh, we know that uh, this is the Baby Snook show that was produced by Jello for the Ed Sullivan radio program, and then they shortly did it on the TV program before it got too weird, and they just stopped doing it. So, lucky you. Yay. Uh, so, as uh, Snooks, where Deneen is going to be playing Snooks, our troublemaker and too clever for her own good. We, uh, da <laughs> who wanted to play daddy again? I'm gonna be daddy. Yep, of course you are. <laughs> and then, and then, oh, and then Jer our cool guy. Well, that, yeah, that was uh, gonna, yeah, that was gonna be you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be the cool guy. Cool finally. guy. Cool guy. Finally. Uh, we need a Henrietta, a Henrietta, a stuck-up classmate of Snooks. Who wants Thank to be that? You. Thank you. <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> okay, okay. That is now Ezra. Uh, Skip, uh, what, are you, what are you feeling down there? Uh, what's left? We've got Mr. Wilcox, the announcer. Ooh. He's also in the script yeah. as well. <laughs> and we've also got Mummy. I'll and take the Isabel. Mummy. You want to be Mummy? <laughs> mummy. <laughs> uh, Kyle, would you like to be Mr. Wilcox? Sure, yeah. Is that, wait, is that everybody? Jerry, did we have Jerry? I'm uh, Jerry. Okay, yeah, cool. Okay, guy. Jerry. Oh, yeah, what about Isabel? <laughs> Isabel. Jerry's kind of a small part, so do you want to also be uh, Isabel? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> Make sure we can really hear the difference. Okay. Yes. Good <laughs> <laughs> All, right. Uh, all right, everybody. So, once again, this is the Baby Snook Show. This is a real script. We did not write it. It is not our fault. Right. And no, no one at ALA <laughs> approved of these. So let's get started. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> oh, by the way, singers is all of us. Oh. You know the, you know the Jello jingle? I do. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's oh, not that. It's not this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should start without the music, so it doesn't throw us off. <laughs> so I'm gonna do. So do the music. I'll do our little intro, and then you can cut it out, and we'll start the actual script. <laughs> that means yes. You speak fully fluently. I do. <laughs> All right, take it away, Victor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from that exciting first half here at ALA 2019. Next up, the Baby Snook Show from the Ed Sullivan Program, brought to you by Jell-O. 
J E L L O. <laughs> Yum. Jello. <laughs> and I like it. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> it's Baby Snooks. Do you have rock by baby? <laughs> it says specifically. <laughs> nope, no. It does not happen. Rock-a-bye. A head scratch is international uh, Foley language for I don't have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get it up. Yeah. Yes, Jello in those six delicious flavors brings you the Baby Snooks Show. Hey. And now to six. More Terrace. It's early morning and Daddy is just dropping Snooks and her little friend Isabel off at school. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm a I'm a mummy or I'm mommy? I thought I was a mummy. <laughs> I'm playing mommy? Oh crap. No, skip, no, skip, skip. <laughs> skip, you play it however you want to play it. Well, mommy's gonna be a mummy. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for that commercial interruption. <laughs> Uh, well, here you are, kids. Study hard. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Higgins. Goodbye. Goodbye, folks. Goodbye, Snooks. And please don't make any trouble for the teacher. You've had to stand in the corner every day this week. That ain't my fault. I don't care whose fault it is. You've been wearing that dunce cap so often, your heart starts... Your head's starting to become pointed. No, it ain't. It's always that way. Now go on and try to be smart. I am. Yesterday, I was the only one in the whole class who could answer the teacher's question. Really? What was the question? Who put the chewing gum in Annabella's hair? Well, don't (laughs) let me hear anything like that again. I'll try not to. Goodbye, Daddy and Mummy. Uh, goodbye, goodbye, dear. dear. You, you adorable little scam. Yes, <laughs> Come on, Snooks. Oh, look. There's Henrietta Barstow. Hello, Henrietta. Hello, Isabel. Hello, Henrietta. Hello, Snooks. Oh. Isabel, oh. I'm having a party this Friday night. And I'd like you to come. Oh, thank you, Henrietta. I'd be glad to come. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Good. (laughs) Did you forget something, Henrietta? Did you hear something, Isabel? (laughs) Nope. I don't think so. Uh, you sure? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure. You're, I'm really sure. Yeah, hey, yeah hey, I'm sure. Hey, I'm hey, sure. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Hey, no, no. Are you absolutely positively sure? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you know what I feel like doing Friday night, Henrietta? What? I feel like just going to a party. Well, why don't you? Because nobody invited me. Oh. <laughs> well, that's too bad. Oh. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, a funny riddle? <laughs> <laughs> Want to hear it? No. Oh, it's very funny. <laughs> It'll make you laugh like anything. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear it? Oh, all right. What is it? Well, you say to me, Snooks, would you like to come to my party? Why? Because the answer is very funny. All right. <laughs> Snooks, would you like to come to my party? I'd love to! I'll see you at your party, Henrietta! <laughs> oh, there you are, Snooks. I haven't seen you since we got here. What are you doing there all the way in the corner? Just sitting. Why don't you get out here and dance? I did. Stopped you? She's, Why? She said I like silly dancing with the chair. Oh, what's the matter, Snooks? Don't you like any of the boys here? Yeah, I like them all. Whoa. Then why, then why don't you try to get them to dance with you? I tried, but they're all stronger than I am. Ooh, well, here comes Jerry. I'll get him over here and then you talk to him. What I'll say? Do you want to dance, Jerry? 
Oh, no, no, no. Lead up to it gradually. All right, you hold him while I talk to him. You who? Jerry, come here a minute. Hello, Isabel. I'd like you to meet Snook Higgins. Hello, Snooks. Hello, how do you like school? Any of the music nice? You want to dance? No, thanks. I've got the next one with Henrietta. Oh, well, 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 how about the one after? No, I'm dancing with Isabel. The one after that? Um, I figured I'd be tied by them, so, um, look, silly, I don't want to dance with you. Oh, boo! You, you want to wrestle? Oh, oh. <laughs> why don't you go home and tell your mother she wants you? Bye, Isabel. Oh, Snooks, you have to learn more about boys. It's no use. I guess they don't like the brainy type. Oh, look, here comes someone you know. It's Mr. Wilcox. Talk to him, Snooks. I'll see you later. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Snooks. Nice party, isn't it? Is it? Why, what's the matter? I can't find a boy who likes well, then I came along at just the right time. You? That's right. Oh, Mr. Wilcox, I didn't know you cared. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. Can I call you Harlow? Oh, well, yes. Come but, uh... on, let's dance, Harlow. <laughs> you, 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 you... <laughs> this has gotten uncomfortable quickly. <laughs> you, you got me wrong, Snooks. I just meant I, I know a surefire way to get any boy interested and keep him that way. Tell me quick! <laughs> why, why, everybody knows the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Uh, and everybody knows that Jello is a real heart winner. And now that Jello's coming back again, more and more Jello <laughs> in all six delicious flavors. What? You can be the belle of every ball. Mm. Who ever heard of dancing with Jello? Oh, that, that's uh, that's that's just it, Snooks. <laughs> Who wants to dance when they can eat Jello? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jello in, in any one of those six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. Each flavor is so rich with that famous locked-in goodness. So delectable it makes you think of the real ripe fruit. Like, the boys will be asking you to sit every dance out. <laughs> That's just what they're asking me now. Gee, thanks, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> Don't, don't mention it, please. <laughs> well, uh, I'll be running along now. Uh, uh, see you later, Snooks. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> well, Snooks, I hope you're enjoying my party. You want to know something, Henrietta? What? Your party is very, very icky. <gasps> oh, is that so? Well, you insisted on coming. Yeah, but you ain't got enough boys to go around. Poor. When I give my party, <laughs> I'm having nine boys for every girl. You're a nympho. Don't be silly. <laughs> you can't even get one boy for yourself. I can if I want to. Prove it. Why can't I? <laughs> hmm. You cannot. Why can't I? Because I said that line already. If you want to know, because you're not pretty enough. <gasps> Burn. Oh, count it. Oh, no. How would you like a smack on the nose? Oop, 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 ow. Oh, jeez. <laughs> She's killed her. <laughs> Fighting won't get you anywhere. No. But it's going to change your looks. Take that! Get that! <laughs> Mama, make her go home! <laughs> Gosh. I don't understand it, Snooks. The party's still going on. Why did you call me to take you home so early? What happened? Well, well, I want a boyfriend, but everybody thinks I'm ugly. Well, not 
everybody. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> look, Snooks. Now, there's no use trying to kid you as long as there are mirrors in the house. <laughs> You're young and ugly. <laughs> this explains what's wrong with all our parents. This is the entertainment of the day. But, but just remember the story of the ugly duckling. Wait till you grow up. Then, you know what you'll be then? Yeah, old and ugly. <laughs> you will not. You'll be like, well, maybe you will be. <laughs> You've got your father's looks. Well, now, dear. Oh, but you'll be graceful. You'll have a nice personality. <laughs> you'll I be will. like a graceful swan, yes. Yeah, I, I will. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, now what? I'll have feathers on my back. Now, stop it. You, those are pimples. <laughs> and they'll go away. But you don't have to worry about it now. You have 10 years to play. Another 10 years to play. And after that, there's always the Lonely Hearts Club. It's where I met your father. That's right. Oh. Yes. Just last week. It's the Lonely Hearts Club. Well, nothing for you. They advertise they'll get you a sweetheart when all else has failed. Aww. Lonely Hearts Club, huh? Yes. Oh, dear Lonely Hearts Club, I am writing you because I want a sweetheart. I want one so bad. Oh dear, you're illiterate. You can't write. <laughs> that completes this episode of The Baby Snook Show. Buy bonds and buy jello. <laughs> I am so sorry. I wanted the teacher coming in and not that jello. You couldn't see, but afterwards we we coated him in Purell. Yeah. It was it was dirty. Um, yeah. <laughs> we actually have time for one more. Right. We have one more. Do you want to hear one more? Oh, Woo! Yeah. I must warn really you. The last one is much more serious. Uh -oh. The last yeah. one involves. Murder. <gasps> a murder. A murder. A murder. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. All right. What Take are these one. Scripts? Pass it down. I don't know why I stood up for that. <laughs> she was gonna show off my suit. Show off the suit. Look at that suit. Alright everyone, this is the strange Dr. Weird. The strange Dr. Dr. Weird. Weird. Uh, this one is from March 6th, 1945. Great year. So, the war ended. I don't think the war had ended yet. Nope. So it was a weird time. Brian, can you give me like two minutes? I will give you two. We gotta Thank cast you. it. We're gonna cast it real quick. Oh good, you do that. I'll do this. <laughs> yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's do... Uh, okay. do, 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 do. No, no, I think we need one more. Oh, no, that's true. There's one more, we need one more. We have one more? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, good, okay. You don't get one. I don't get one. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Awesome. You need to look at this. I'm going to look at this real it. quick. Real <laughs> quick. <laughs> you, you, you've heard us. Cast us. I just us. need to get one yeah. real fast. Oh, do you, wait. Wait, no, he has one. I got one. Oh, okay. okay. Everybody got one? Yep. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, do, 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 good-natured and trusting, mm, nobody here, uh, innocent, naive, nope. nope, ooh, this is not a great script for us, um, uh, Ezra, I want you to be Blanche, yep, yep, we're just going to lean into that, uh, then, Gerald, charming and sincere, Kyle, okay, okay, yeah. does, does the person doing the sounds get a script? You nope. said you had your own scripts. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Here, Victor. Great. Are these? Are these the? Maybe those are the. Thank you. Cues? Is this the? Oh, this is. Oh, yeah. No, I don't have this one. Good Christ, no. <laughs> We're doing it live. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Who else is what? Uh, uh, keep, and then you get. Are you looking for another so one? So far, I'm Blanche. Right. You're Blanche. So far, I'm Blanche. Gerald. I'm Gerald. Okay. 
Jane, uh, oh, you want to be Jane? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Jane? yeah, yeah. Denise, yeah. Jane. Yeah, I am. The ladies will be right here. Yes. Skip, would you like to be the lawyer? I will be the lawyer. Okay. Sydney Rand. Sydney Rand is the lawyer. Uh, Chris? Yes. The other Chris? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, would you like to be Dan? Dan, yes. Good natured and trusting. And then, first Chris. Thank you. Dr. Weird. Dr. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that is. You, do you want to no, uh, do you want to be the announcer? The announcer. Ah, uh, sure. You haven't you haven't played yet. You got to play. Fine. <laughs> I paid. Now I'm gonna play. Mm -hmm. L.A. theater joke. Nope. Great. <laughs> got it. Thank you. Ha ha. Been, been there. All right. Are we ready? As Possibly. As Not yet. Anybody got any questions? <sighs> <laughs> yeah. What the heck are we doing? <laughs> Kidding. No, I ask general? myself that every day. We're disappointing our parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then let's keep at it. Yay! Yes. All right. <laughs> I think this one was originally brought to us by Ovaltine. <gasps> oh my gosh, <gasps> from a Christmas story. Yes. Ovaltine? Rich chocolate Rich Ovaltine. Rich chocolate Ovaltine. The comer I cut out the commercial. It was very aggressive. It was like, if you want to be if you want to be popular, drink Ovaltine every day. Tell your parents to go out and buy it right now. And you're like, jeez. <laughs> Please, Please yeah. don't kill me. I will buy the Oval yeah, Team. I will buy the Oval <laughs> Team. Um, uh, Perfect. So, oh, we're going. Are we, Very uh, nice. Is this it? Uh, yes. I was giving that to you guys. <laughs> to oh, just the band. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. I think to, to set the scene because there really isn't any um, okay. stage directions here. This takes place, let's say, in the French Alps. Okay. Not. Did okay. you just make, make that, that up? up? I did. It takes place on a mountain, so I went classy. Got All it. Right. Yes. Are we ready? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. sure. Why not? It's always great when the sound engineer is like, nah, I'll do sure. <laughs> All right. Well, here we the go. script says we need a short, creepy intro. That's true. That's creepy. <laughs> Denise's feeling it. Ooh, okay. Uh, oh, that's me. Great. You. Presenting the strange Dr. Weird. Good evening. Come in, won't you? <laughs> Why, what's the matter? You seem a bit nervous. Perhaps the cemetery outside this house has upset you, but there are things far worse than cemeteries. For instance... A woman with murder in her heart, as in my story tonight. A story I call The Voice of Death. My story, The Voice of Death, begins in the snow covered wilderness of Canada. Nope, I was wrong. And the Alps. In the Alps. In the Alps. In a high, narrow canyon, a man and woman on skis sit resting on the trunk of a fallen tree. Catching the breath. Just give me a second. Blanche, I, I can't tell you how sorry I am that Uncle John didn't leave you anything in his will. That's just terrible. Well, oh, there's nothing to be sorry about, Gerald. After all, I was only your Uncle John's second cousin. I wish that Jane and Dan had taken it as well. They certainly were downcast after reading the will this morning. Well, naturally. They were your uncle's niece and nephew, too, and had hoped to share the estate with you. You can't blame them for being disappointed. No, I suppose not. <laughs> We'd better be starting back to the lodge. Birds cold in the apps of Canada. <laughs> I can't see... I can see you're a bit uneasy about being in this canyon, canyon, well, canyon, canyon. Isn't, <laughs> well, isn't it a bit dangerous being here? Look at how the snow is piled up above us on each side of this canyon. Canyon, canyon, canyon. canyon, canyon. canyon. If there was a snow slide, we'd be buried alive. <gasps> isn't that dangerous? Of course, a loud noise or some shouting might start a slide. <laughs> Come along. Come along. Come. Ooh, it's cold. You feel that snow? I, I sure do. 
Well, you can breathe easy now. We're out of danger. <gasps> oh, dear. <laughs> What's the matter? Did you lose something? Oh, yes, my... my... my camera. I think I left it back on the trunk of that tree that we were sitting on. Burr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gerald, would you mind getting it for me? Why, no, of course not, Blanche. Uh, y you say it's on the trunk of the tree? Yes, yes, that's right. Do you see it, Gerald? No, Blanche, I don't. Perhaps it fell in the snow. Oh, look around. What? I am looking, but I don't see any sign of it. Blanche, the snow! Gerald, run this way! Oh no, it's too late! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork, Brian. Teamwork. <laughs> Oh, Blanche, it's so terrible. Gerald buried under all that snow. Perhaps we should have stayed in the canyon, 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 until we found the body instead of continuing back to the lodge. Jane, there's nothing we could have done down there. And it's so cold. <laughs> okay, Dan and I will share Uncle John's estate now, but I'll gladly give up my share if it would bring Gerald back alive. <laughs> I know you would, dear. Uh -huh. Hmm. We crossed the river here, Jane. But the ice looks so thin. Blanche, we didn't cross here on the way to the canyon. Canyon, canyon. Did we? <laughs> no, dear. This is a shortcut. I remember it correctly. Uh, uh, oh, oh, Blanche, it looks too dangerous. It will support us, dear. I tell you what. I will cross it first. Oh, Blanche, I wish you wouldn't. That ice is going to break any minute. Uh, uh, nonsense. <laughs> See, I'm already halfway across. But like, hey, hey. I can see, like, cracks in the ice under your feet. So, so can I, but the ice is still strong enough to support me. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh -huh. See, I made it. Now, Jane, it's your turn now. Uh, Blanche, I'm frightened. Darling, <laughs> there isn't anything to be frightened of. Now, come along. Well, all right. Oh, uh, oh, I feel so unstable. Look! could take your skis off. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you could take your skis off. I think you will find it easier to walk across than to ski over ice. You're not, so, you're not such a good skier as I know you. Well, I don't know that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Drop page. Uh, very well, Blanche, if you say so. Hurry, dear. It'll be dark soon. I've got them, like, off now. Here I come. <laughs> That's it. Keep coming. <laughs> Round of applause for Victor real quick, everybody. It's pretty good. I'm still on my way. Hold on. That's it. I yeah. told you the ice would hold, dear. Blanche, the ice feels as though it will give away under me at, like, any second. It felt the same way when I crossed. But as you can see, I managed. Blanche! Oh, the ice is breaking! Help! Help! Oh, Blanche, help me! Blanche, I can't swim! Blanche! Don't let me die. <laughs> oh, poor Jane. That's right. You should never have taken your skis taken off your skis before crossing the ice. Well, now that leaves only Dan. Oh. <laughs> Will Blanche succeed in getting rid of Dan? Will she get Uncle John's estate? Dr. Weird be back to tell us the rest of this chilling tale? Yes, yes, I'll be back with all these questions. Aren't you going to ask one about Adam Hatz? Nope, because I cut that part. <laughs> and now, to continue my story, I hope you all enjoyed the one about Adam Hatz. <laughs> the voice of death. It is the day following the tragic death of Gerald and Jane. 
in the living room of the luxurious lodge of the late John Drake. There are Blanche, Dan, and Sidney Rand, attorney for the estate. There's a strange look in Mr. Rand's eyes as he speaks to Blanche. Yeah, all I can say, it, uh, it's very odd, Blanche. First you go skiing, wood chair, and then he dies under the snow. Slide. And then a few hours later, while I'm alone with you, Jane drowns, curls on the rear. I don't like your attitude. <laughs> I understand. Hmm. You act as though I caused their deaths. Well, Blanche is right, Mr. Rand. You, you haven't any right to say that, Mr. Potter. The, the village coroner said their deaths were accidental, Uncle Billy. <laughs> I know what the village coroner said. It doesn't mean that I, I have to agree. Is that now, look. Parents? Now, look, you'll see here. It's 5 o'clock now. If you don't start for the village station right now, you'll miss your train. Now, think about it, Uncle Billy. Where did you leave that envelope, you old fool? Think about it. What the hell are you rambling on about? Well, look, then you're not going to change your mind. You're going to come with me. No, I told you I'm staying up here for another week to filibuster. I need the rest. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I just hope you don't find a, a, a permanent rest up here. What you know what you, I'm talking well, what, you know what, what do you... Well, what you I'll tell you what I... I'll tell you what I... I just this. If anything here happens to you, Blanche... She'd be, hold on, I gotta train, I gotta catch my thoughts. Okay, here it is. If anything here happens to you, Blanche would be the heir to everything. I mean it all. Now you think it over. Oh, Dan, you don't believe I had anything to do with their deaths, do you? Of course not, Blanche. Hmm. It's absurd to think you were involved in any way. I'm gonna lasso the moon for you. <laughs> Pull it down for you. Pull down the moon for you. All right, fine. Four days passed, days in which steadily falling snow kept Dan and Blanche cooped up in the lodge. With each day that passed, Blanche seemed increasingly nervous and jumpy for no reason that was apparent to Dan. When the fifth day dawned bright and clear, Dan suggested a long ski run, and Blanche eagerly agreed. After skiing a few minutes, she called out. Dan! Dan! We aren't going through the canyon, are we? Canyon, are, canyon, are we? <laughs> Why, of course we are. Dan, let's go around it this time. Well, that's three miles further on. So what's wrong with going through the canyon? Say, is, is it because that's where Gerald died? Yes. I can't do it, Dan. Well, look, I, look, I hope you're not brooding about Gerald's death. You, you must go on. I'm not brooding, but... But, Dan, have you heard a voice calling outside the house the past several nights? A voice? Yes. I've woken up several times thinking I heard Gerald's voice calling out in the storm. Oh, Blanche. You heard the wind howling, that's all. Mm -hmm. Now... Now, come on, will you? We have to get through the canyon, the canyon, the canyon. It's the only way to calm your nerves. <sighs> now, that's a girl. Come on, buffalo gal. <sighs> Won't you come out tonight? <laughs> now, only another couple hundred more yards, and we'll be out of the canyon, the canyon. <sighs> Let's hurry, Dan. This is where it happened. Come along, then, if you want to hurry. Blanche! Blanche! It's Gerald! It's Gerald's voice! Blanche! Blanche! <laughs> this is where you killed me! Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> what, what, Blanche? Oh, why have you stopped? Come on! I'm dead, Blanche! Killed me! I don't hear anything! I don't! It's just my imagination! Uh, Blanche, come on! D damn it! I'll Blanche! I'll never leave you until you tell the truth! Oh no! 
Confess! Confess! Yes! <laughs> yes, I murdered you! <laughs> I caused the snow slide! I shouted and caused it! I did it because the fortune was mine! Mine! <laughs> and I know, and I know I was cheated out of it! Now be quiet! Be quiet, Gerald! Don't talk to me anymore! Don't talk to me anymore! The Blanche, look out! Oh, the snow is sliding! <laughs> Jump to Dr. Weird. Oh, wouldn't yeah. A moment later, as Dan stared stunned <laughs> at the spot where Blanche had vanished under tons of snow, Mr. Rad, the lawyer, came skiing up to him from around an outcropping of rock. Dan, uh, you're a fool. Uh, it reminds me of a song. <laughs> like a fool. Uh, maybe a little later. I, I can see you're not digging it. You were close to that snow slide. You almost killed yourself. Gosh, Mr. Potter, she's dead. She's buried under all that snow. I, I know. <laughs> you heard her confess, didn't you? Yes, but when I agreed to follow the instructions you left for me in the mailbox, I, I never dreamed it would end like this. I kept on telling myself she was innocent. I know. Well, she wasn't, was she? I knew she couldn't be. That's why I made her think that it was clearing out. Instead, I went down to that, that gamekeeper's cottage there uh, by the lake. And that's where I, I've been the last few days. Yes, I, I guess that after I got your first note, asking me not to show any surprise no matter what happened, even when a woman was killed by a, by a freaking snow slide. But Mr. Rand, but Mr. Rand, the voice that Blanche heard in the night and the voice just now. Well, I could have sworn it was Gerald's voice. I could have sworn Blanche it. Blanche uh, killed me. <laughs> I know. I, I counted on that. I knew Joel well. And I can do vocal imitations. No, Blanche! You kill! I thought it was pretty good. And that's exactly what you heard. It was me, not him. My scheme was a wild one, Dan, but it was the only possibility of getting that woman to confess. So uh, those murders were committed. They were perfect. You know what I mean? Your impression is, it's uncanny. I know. Thank you. Two perfect murders, and, and she, was, she was so beautiful. She was, and her own screams brought her down. The snow slide, which killed her. And I don't think all the judges in the world could have found a more fitting punishment than the one her own conscience provided. <laughs> I can milk a scene better than any of them. Milk, <laughs> milk, milk. I'm still milking. <laughs> Hang on. Go ahead. Sorry. Too bad about poor Blanche, wasn't it? Looks like the man who said the female of the species is more deadly than the male knew what he was talking about. But wait, if you're an heir and you know someone who stands to gain by your death, I'd be very careful to stay away from... Oh, you have to go now? Perhaps you'll drop in on me again soon. Just look for the house on the other side of the cemetery. The house of Dr. Weird. <laughs> Another round of applause for Victor over there. Victor is definitely getting in his steps today. He also took a huge <laughs> spill, and it was steps. impressive. Yeah, I got my steps in. I think maybe a concussion, too, on the last <laughs> thing, let me tell you. Uh, all right, guys. Well, um, that pretty much wraps it up for us here. We hope you enjoyed these actual scripts from the time period. Once again, it was a different time if you were offended. Whoever wrote these is dead, so it's fine. <laughs>
<laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, this is always uh, a blast to do, to get all these amazingly talented voice actors, give them little to no prompting, and then just see what happens. Um, once again, uh, this has been the uh, old-timey radio panel. If you actually want to see a lot of these voice actors on Sunday, I don't remember what time. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., there is a oh, voice early. actor roundtable. Uh, where it is these fine voice actors and many more on this exact same stage. Please come check it out. Ask them all your burning questions, how to do your taxes, anything, all the adulty stuff. Don't ask us to help you with that. We're, <laughs> we're not good at that. I don't. But technically, we have a few <laughs> minutes I left. Taxes in 10 years. I'm going to prison. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it here. No, look, it's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Des, but for, let's, uh, real quick, if there is any burning questions, if you can't come back on Sunday, is there any burning questions anyone has for anyone out there? Anyone up here? Anyone out there? Questions for anyone can't up here? See. Can't see, so just stand up and ask it. Nobody's asking anything. No one's asking a question. I mean, it doesn't help that we can barely see them. Yeah. Somebody's leaving. You. Someone's leaving. Yeah. This is going well. Bye. <laughs> Have a good convention. I know that somebody. Bye. <laughs> oh, that's one of our fully people. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there's someone. There. I can see them. Thank you. Speed, we'll speed through. You want to go to start down there? Go ahead. For me, it was George Bailey in that skit we just did. <laughs> that was a, my favorite one ever. His favorite, favorite ever. Yeah. Skip. It's probably uh, Isaac. Uh, definitely Guy Sensei. Yeah. He's just oh, yeah. as crazy as crazy gets. Uh, Gundam Tanaka and Danganronpa. I was always a fan of Fred Lau from Outlaw Star. Yes. yes. <laughs> I actually can't talk about my character yet because NDAs, <laughs> but maybe next year. Yay! <laughs> yeah. You guys actually all picked roles. I can never answer that question. What's your favorite role that you've a ton of voiced? Kyle. That's I know, like I know. A, no. It's just it like sounds so like, whiny. Okay. No, no. I'm just saying like it, I like I love them all. They're, you do. They're, you they're love wonderful. them all. Well, you do love them all, but what's yeah. your favorite? You what's the one favorite? that you remember? There's not a favorite. What's I don't have a favorite child. I would say what's the one you remember first. Instead of your favorite, which one comes to mind first? 9S from Nier yeah. Automata. There you go. Definitely. Mine would probably be Ultraman Victory because he was the bad boy with the cool hair. Thank you. <laughs> Good question. Next question. Anybody else? Anyone else? Oh, there's yes. a couple. See, yeah, no one wants to be first. You, you are, did. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, have I, I have a person. I have a person. I have a person. I have a person. Now, don't, yeah. I don't trust TurboTax Turbo at all. Yeah. Person. They yeah. cost no. a lot more money than. Yeah. Yeah. That's than a great they, question. Yeah. If you can learn Thank how to you. do taxes yourself, it's incredibly beneficial. No, you're on the wire for it, though. <laughs> yeah. I see another couple Qu people standing. Yes. Victor Frost. Yes. One have second. You have you had to work with vinyl a lot nowadays? Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, no, vinyl is amazing. I buy a record at least every month. It's, it's not, it is not by any means a great format, but it's fun. <laughs> I see another person standing back there. Yes, on the left, yeah. <laughs> How does one start voice acting? Oh, that's... You get a microphone. Yeah. You to, yeah, you get a microphone. No. No, no. <laughs> the... Somebody take this I one. I think you would need to start because by just being an actor to mm -hmm. begin with. Yes. Like, there's no way to just jump right into voice acting as a voice actor. You need to be an actor, and that is something that happens to you when you're a young person with your sense of imagination and play. And then you figure out other ways that you could utilize that, and then you realize you need to make an income, and you find out ways that you can make money from it. And that led us all to voice acting, commercial yeah. acting, stage acting, film jobs, anything that involves the mm -hmm. acting that we all feel connected to. Um, that's, that's how anybody who is a voice actor found voice acting that has a career in voice acting, is because they always had a sense of that actor inside of them that needs to come out and speak. There you go. Great answer. Great answer, Ezra. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? How many of you have actually heard of those old-time radio dramas that you can have? 
Dick Tracy. I'm a big fan of the shadow. I was just about to say Were the you? shadow. Now I used to listen. Yes. I used to buy back when I was a, a teenager. There used to be cassettes that you would get because that was the new technology of the day, right? A cassette tape, and it was, and it came in like one of those crazy long clamshell like wrappers, like the vacuum seal type of thing that are impossible to open. And it was like the cassette and then a very long piece of plastic and you would find them at a record store, at, mainly at a bookstore, because it was, you know, it was a radio drama on tape. Yeah. And I had a couple of the shadows, but I also had this one with Agnes Moorhead that was murder, uh, that was, uh, sorry, wrong number. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, wrong yeah. number. And it was part of the suspense series. Yes. And I loved things like that. Yep. And that's why I also love things like Black Mirror. Because they're like, ooh, they're creepy and they're weird. And you sort of like figure it out. It's like Hitchcock as well. Anything that sort of like starts in the middle and you watch and you have to figure it out as it evolves. And then you're in involved and you're shocked by the ending. That's like my favorite type of entertainment. And it started with these radio dramas because it's all happening in my mind. It wasn't like told yeah. to me yeah. mm -hmm. how it should all be set up. That's so, what made me want to get into voice acting was I wanted yeah. to do stuff like this. And they were like, honey, that doesn't exist anymore. And I was like, no, I'm going to find it. it and it does. was an anime. Yeah, yeah. My, it does. My Welcome voice to Night Vale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, my voice acting career started because I, I did an amateur radio play on the internet called The Chalice of Silver Moon. You can Google it. It's still out there somewhere. Uh, that's based on Warcraft. And, and, then, uh, oh God, and, then it, yes. and then at one point later on, my, our, our WOW Radio podcasting network changed into just a general podcasting network, and we did for a little while uh, something called Tales from Your Mom's Basement, which was original scripts for a lot of them that we did live radio play performances. And then, and then we did some old... We did an episode of The Shadow at one point, and uh, I think we did an episode of Superman, and yeah, a lot really of fun. Liked, I the, love this stuff. The original Green Hornet. Oh, uh, yeah, Parts yeah. of it were really, really awkward, but it, it, was, it was fun, as well as, uh, was it My Favorite Husband? The, with Lucille Ball, that, that before it got adapted in TV show, she actually had a radio program, mm -hmm. and that is what got her the attention and everything. These are all great questions. All right, we only have a few minutes. Is there any pressing questions, and then we're going to sign off. Oh, great. We're doing Aww. great. Doing pretty well. It feels like this weekend with this extra day, everything has got, there's like more stuff. Yeah. And it already feels like we're in the middle of the weekend, but it is still yep. Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, so it is more days. an incredible, <laughs> it's got like an incredible energy in the space and to the convention in general because we've done so much, but there's still so much to look forward to. My voice is already a little bit tired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mine is already dead broken. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to fix but it when I, I get back to But it's LA. definitely a lot of fun. How are you doing? Yes. Oh, Yay! wonderfully spiffy. Chip, so chip, come up. I'm going to give you a ribbon. Yeah. Afterwards, yes. This is Andrew. Oh, hi. I get to see you. All right, everyone. Uh, I have one last thing for us to read. Oh. Um, I lost all the other copies, so we're going to share. Okay. Good. And um, we're going to, if it's already broken down, you're going to take it and you're going to pass it down. And we get to the end, just pass, send it back. Uh, and this is basically an actual uh, interstitial from uh, a different episode of The Adventures of Superman. Oh, I have those. Oh, you have them. Oh. Okay, everybody gets one. Skip took them. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. How did you end up with all the script? <laughs> That's what happens when Brian forgets to print things out on different colored pieces of paper. Ah. <laughs> I see. Is it the same thing? It is the same thing. Yes. Perfect. I, have I think this is in bigger font. Oh, it is. Good. All right. We're not going to sell you Jello. Although that would be funny. All right, everyone. Are we all ready? Has everyone had a good time today? Yes. All right. Yay. We're going to end this right. <clears throat> Take your seats, boys and girls. We're about to give you a thrilling lecture on the ostrich. The ostrich is a bird which lives in Africa. It has a tiny, tiny little brain for its very large size, so sometimes it behaves like a fool. Well, listen to this. When a stranger comes near, the ostrich buries his head in the sand. 
He does this because he doesn't want anybody else around. And if he can't actually see them, he figures they're not there. <laughs> now, isn't that about as dumb as a living creature can possibly be? Well, maybe not. I know one thing dumber than an ostrich. A human being who falls into the same silly habits. We mean the kind of silly human bird who buries his mind in prejudice. The sort who tells himself that he's better than everybody else, especially folks who don't happen to be of his particular race or religion. What he's doing, really, is sticking his head in the sand and pretending that nobody else in the world exists. Well, that's plain nonsense. Of course other people exist. Millions and millions <laughs> of them. Of every imaginable race and religion and background. People with many different talents, many different jobs to do. In fact, this wonderful variety. Pretty close to you. Yeah, <laughs> that makes our country strong and healthy. And just because some foolish, conceited fellow refuses to look at them doesn't mean they're not there. I wish some of these human bird brains could see how comical they look, standing right out there in plain view and shutting their eyes to all the folks around them. So make sure you're the smart kind of animal out there. Show kindness to every bird you meet. And when you sing your little birdie song, that you'll find harmony with each and every person you meet. That's all we have for you folks. Thank you so much for joining us here at the radio program here at Anime Los Angeles 2019. Hashtag AOA15. I'm going to get used to that someday. We love you all. Please go forth, share love, passion, happiness for everything that we are here for. Uh, if you want to come see us, talk to us some more on Sunday at 10 a.m. in this room. Thank you so much. Go out and buy Jello. Try all six flavors. All six flavors. <laughs>